एटीन हंड्रेड आवर्स पाकिस्तान स्टैंडर्ड टाइम असलकुम दिस इज़ रेडियो पाकिस्तान द न्यूज रेड बाय मोहम्मद जुबैर खान फर्स्ट द हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर इज़ इन काजिकस्तान टू अटेंड द सिक्स समिट ऑफ द कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन इंटरेक्शन एंड कॉन्फिडेंस बिल्डिंग मैयर्स इन एशिया प्रेजिडेंट हेज कॉल फॉर इंक्रीजिंग बायोलैट्रल ट्रेड वॉल्यूम बिटवीन पाकिस्तान एंड हंगरी The United Nations has acknowledged Pakistan's contribution in UN peacekeeping missions and extraordinary achievements in counter-terrorism. In Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, Modi-led Indian government disallowed people to participate in the funeral prayers of martyred All Parties Hurriyat Conference leader Altaf Ahmed Shah in Srinagar. UAE president calls for keeping the Russia-Ukraine dialogue open to resolve the conflict. The semi-finals of Women's Asia Cup will be played at Silhet tomorrow. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif is in Astana, Kazakhstan to attend the 6th summit of the Conference on Interaction and Confidence Building Measures in Asia. On arrival, he was received by the Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister of Kazakhstan. The Prime Minister is accompanied by cabinet members and other high-ranking officials. During his stay in Astana, Prime Minister will meet the President of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, and also attend the banquet hosted by President of Kazakhstan, Kasim Jomar Tokayev, in honor of leaders of the SICA member states. The Prime Minister will address the plenary meeting of SICA on October the 13th, where he will elaborate upon the significance of SICA as a unique forum for promoting interaction, understanding, and collaboration amongst countries across Asia to address common challenges. He will also highlight Pakistan's perspective on regional and global issues. President Dr. Arif Alvi has called for increasing bilateral trade volume between Pakistan and Hungary. He was talking to Pakistan's ambassador designate to Hungary, Asif Hussain Maimon, in Islamabad today. The president said increase in trade volume from its existing level of $50 million to $150 million will help realize the full potential of bilateral trade, business and investment. The president advised the envoy designate to engage the Hungarian oil and gas company which had a sizable investment in Pakistan and to encourage it to extend its operations to renewable energy as well. He appreciated the support of Hungary for GSP plus status to Pakistan. Dr. Arif Alvi said there is a need to talk about Hindutva philosophy and the increasing trend of Islamophobia in India which is putting the lives and properties of Muslims under threat. Minister for Power Khurram Dastagir has said that a relief of 55 billion rupees has been provided to consumers in electricity bills on the special directives of Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif. He was talking to Speaker of National Assembly Raja Parvez Ashraf in Islamabad today. The minister said the flood affected people are being provided relief of 10 billion rupees in electricity bills. In his remarks the Speaker of National Assembly emphasized the need for collective efforts to address the problems faced by the country including that of energy crisis. He said effective legislation is also being done by the parliament to address the public problems. Japan has vowed to further enhance its investment in Pakistan particularly in the energy sector. The resolve was expressed by ambassador of Japan to Pakistan Mitsuhiro Wada during meeting with Minister for Energy Engineer Khurram Dastagir Khan in Islamabad today. Appreciating the solar energy initiative of the incumbent government he said Japan has been investing in Pakistan's power sector and Japanese companies are also interested in investing in solar energy speaking on the occasion the minister expressed satisfaction over the momentum of bilateral ties and appreciated japan's long standing engagement with pakistan for improving its economic and social infrastructure commending the japanese investment in pakistan khurram dastagir khan also highlighted that pakistan's energy sector offers vast opportunities for investment especially in renewable energy sector During the meeting the Japanese ambassador reiterated his country's support to Pakistan in tackling the devastation caused by floods. The UN Under Secretary General Department of Peacekeeping Operations Jean Pierre Lacroix called on Chief of Army Staff General Kamar Javed Bajwa in Rawalpindi today. During the meeting matters of mutual interest and overall regional security situation were discussed. The army chief appreciated the role of the office of under secretary in promoting UN core values. and the response during crisis the un dignitary acknowledged pakistan's contribution in un peacekeeping missions and extraordinary achievements in counter terrorism 
He expressed grief over the devastation caused by floods in Pakistan due to climate change and offered sincere condolence to the families of the victims. Pakistan and China have agreed to closely communicate and cooperate in the fields of international communication, strategy, docking information release coordination and cracking down on false information for the development of bilateral ties. The understanding to this effect was reached during the conversation between China's Assistant Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Hua Chunjing, and spokesperson of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Asim Iftikhar Ahmed, via video link today. The two sides exchanged views on China-Pakistan news media exchange, information release, public diplomacy, and other topics. This is Radio Pakistan. In Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the Modi-led Indian government disallowed people to participate in the funeral prayers of the martyred All Parties Hurriyat Conference leader Altaf Ahmed Shah in Srinagar. According to Kashmir Media Service, the occupation regime snapped the internet service and sealed all entry and exit points before arrival of Altaf Ahmed Shah's body at his residence in Bachpura area of Srinagar late last night. The personnel of Indian Army, paramilitary and police sealed Bajpura and adjoining areas while only relatives were allowed to attend the funeral. Heavy deployment of Indian forces personnel was also made at the local graveyard where the martyred Altaf Ahmed Shah was laid to rest. Illegally detained APHC Vice Chairman Shabir Ahmed Shah in a message from New Delhi's Tihar Jail said Altaf Shah's tragic death in custody speaks volumes about the Indian apartheid regime's brutal tactics to eliminate Kashmir's legitimate political leadership. He termed his death as a cold-blooded murder. The funeral prayer in absentia for the martyred All Parties Hurriyat Conference leader Altaf Ahmed Shah was offered in Islamabad today. It was organized by APHC Azad Jammu Kashmir chapter and was attended by a large number of people from different walks of life. The funeral prayers in absentia of Altaf Ahmed Shah were also offered across Azad Jammu and Kashmir. Speakers at these gatherings paid rich tributes to the martyred leader for his contribution and sacrifices in the ongoing Kashmir Freedom Movement. Myanmar's Nobel laureate and deposed leader Aung San Suu Kyi has been sentenced to a further three years in prison by a court, bringing her combined jail term to 26 years. Charged with accepting bribes, the f- found the 77-year-old guilty on two counts of corruption and sentenced her to three years in jail on each count. United Arab Emirates President Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan held talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin during a visit to St. Petersburg to discuss the ongoing conflict in Ukraine and the need to keep Russia-Ukraine dialogue open. During the meeting, the UAE President emphasized the need to keep the dialogue between Russia and Ukraine open, while President Putin stressed that Russia is keen for the continuation of the UAE's mediation efforts. The two leaders also underscored the ongoing rapid growth seen across the UAE-Russia relations and their satisfaction with such growth. The semi-finals of Women's Asia Cup will be played at Silhat tomorrow. The first semi-final will be played between India and Thailand at 8 8 a.m. Pakistan Standard Time, while in second semi-final Pakistan will take on Sri Lanka at 12.30 p.m. And finally, the weather report. Mainly dry weather is expected in most parts while hot in southern parts of the country during the next 12 hours. However, light rain with wind and thunderstorm is likely at isolated places in Upper Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Gilgit-Baltistan, Kashmir and its adjoining hilly areas. And now once again, the headlines. Prime Minister is in Kazakhstan to attend the 6th summit of the Conference on Interaction and Confidence Building Measures in Asia. President has called for increasing bilateral trade between Pakistan and Hungary. The United Nations has acknowledged Pakistan's contribution in UN peacekeeping missions and extraordinary achievements in counter-terrorism. In Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, Modi-led Indian government disallowed people to participate in the funeral prayers of martyred All Parties Hurriyat Conference leader Altaf Ahmed Shah in Srinagar. UAE President calls for keeping the Russia-Ukraine dialogue open to resolve the conflict. The semi-finals of Women's Asia Cup will be played at Silhet tomorrow. And that is the end of the news. For more news and analysis, log on to our website radio.gov.pk and also watch live video streaming of our bulletins on the link facebook.com slash radiopakistannewsofficial.